when people talk about astrology, they usually start with the zodiac signs, like what's your zodiac sign. However, that's where the conversation ends. But today we are going to dive into what astrology really is. To dive deep into what astrology really is, first we need to define it. So according to Merriam-Webster, astrology is defined as the divination of the supposed influences of the stars and planets on human affairs and terrestrial events by their positions and aspects. There are many forms of astrology across the world in different cultures and communities. The most known ones are tropical, Vedic, which is a form of Indian astrology, and Chinese astrology. However, for this, for this video, we're going to be focusing on Western astrology. Western astrology has influences or origins in the Babylonian culture. However, now it has become a major part, an integral part of Western culture. The purpose of astrology is not to strictly define a person or predict the future, but it is to is used as a guiding for not just people but societies and time and every everything encompassing it. The more you know about astrology, the more accurate and personal it can be to you or any situation. So one major aspect of astrology are the zodiac signs. So according to Merriam-Webster, zodiac can be defined as an imaginary band in the heavens centered on the ecliptic that encompasses the apparent paths of all planets and is divided into 12 constellations or signs, each taken for its astrological purposes to extend 30 degrees of long uh, longitude. The 12 signs or constellations are Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. So the first zodiac sign in Western astrology is Aries. Arians are born March 21st to April 19th. It is a fire cardinal sign with Mars being its ruling planet. It also has a positive polarity, which means masculine energy. The second is Taurus. Taurians are born April 20th to May 20th. It is a earth fixed sign with Venus being its ruling planet. It also has a negative polarity or feminine energy. The third is Gemini. Geminis are born May 21st to June 20th. It is an air mutable sign with Mercury being its ruling planet. It also has a positive polarity or masculine energy. The fourth is Cancer. Cancers are born Ju June 21st to July 22nd. It is a water water cardinal sign with the with the moon being its ruling planet. It also has a So the fifth sign is Leo. Leos are born July 23rd to August 22nd. It is a fire fixed sign with the sun being its ruling planet. It also has a positive polarity or masculine energy. The sixth sign is Virgo. Virgos are born August 23rd to September 22nd. It is an earth mutable sign with Mercury as its ruling planet. It also has a negative polarity or feminine energy. The seventh sign is Libra. Libras are born September 23rd to October 22nd. It is an air cardinal sign with Venus being its ruling planet. It also has a positive polarity, polarity or masculine energy. The eighth sign is Scorpio. Scorpios are born October 23rd to November 21st. It is a water cardinal sign with Mars and Pluto being its ru ruling planet. It also has a negative polarity or feminine energy. So 
So the ninth sign is Sagittarius. Sagittarians are born November 22nd to December 21st. It is a fire mutable sign with Jupiter as its ruling planet. It also has a positive polarity or masculine energy. The 10th sign is Capricorn. Capricorns are born December 22nd to January 19th. It is an Earth cardinal sign with Saturn being its ruling planet. It also has a negative polarity or feminine energy. The 11th sign is Aquarius. Aquarians are born January 20th to February 18th. Yes, 18th. It is an air fixed sign with its ruling planets being Saturn and Uranus. Also, it has a positive polarity or masculine energy. The 12th sign and the last sign is Pisces. Pisces are born February 19th to March 20th. It is a water mutable sign with Neptune and Jupiter being its ruling planets. It also has a negative polarity and feminine energy. One major aspect of astrology are birth charts. So birth charts or birth chart can be defined as sort of a snapshot of the sky when a person is born. So positions of planets with constellations and degrees. So birth chart is divided up into 12 houses with the person's uh, with the person's 12 planets being defined by a certain zodiac. For example, I am a Sagittarius sun with the Sagittarius moon and my rising, which we will get into later, is an Aries. As mentioned before, there are 12 houses in a person's birth chart. And these 12 houses are associated with the 12 zodiacs from as mentioned before. So the first house is ruled by Aries and focused on self. The second house is ruled by Taurus and focused on possessions. The third house is ruled by Gemini and focused on communication. The fourth house is ruled by Cancer and focuses on family. The fifth house is ruled by Leo and is focused on creation. The sixth house is ruled by Virgo and it focuses on health. The seventh house is ruled by Libra and focuses on union. The eighth house is ruled by Scorpio and focused on taboo. The ninth house is ruled by Sagittarius and focuses on philosophy. The tenth house is ruled by Capricorn and focuses on prestige. The eleventh house is ruled by Aquarius and is ruled by relationships. The twelfth house is ruled by Pisces and that is focused on expansion. So one thing to note with birth charts is that it cannot be formed without the ascendant, descendant, IC, and midheaven points or signs. So your ascendant is probably the most essential and important of your of your entire birth chart of uh, zodiac signs, astrology, personal astrology, because it is extremely tailored and personal to you because it is based on a person's birth time. So you cannot know your ascendant, descendant, AC, IC, sorry, I apologize, and midheaven without knowing what time you were born. So your ascendant or rising sign, many people call it, is how people perceive you or how you look as a person. So facial features and um, characteristics like height or um, hair and all of that. Your descendant basically is how how other people the people that you attract as a person so trying to represent how your partner or people you're around are your ic or a mum coli is how you were raised where you come from and then your midheaven is where you are going in your life so career paths and where you're ending up in your future these are without even though you cannot figure out these points or signs without your birth time there are other ways to figure out 
your planets, your zodiac signs and your different planets through an empress. So an empress is based on years. It's based on your years. So all you have to do is look up the month, the, your birth month and your birth year. And you'll be able to find through the days what signs are for specific pl- for the different planets. However, you cannot find, you cannot make a birth chart without your birth time, your birth location, and your birthday. So one major factor of birth charts are aspects. So aspects can be defined as varying angles and degrees that planets make with each other in a person's birth chart, which affects how much how much or how it manifests in said birth charts. So five major aspects that a person usually sees, however there are many more, are conjunctions, which are zero degrees. Oppositions, which are 180 degrees. Squares, which are 90 degrees. Trine, which is 120 degrees. As mentioned before, astrology can be used in many different ways when a person knows the basics, such as understanding zodiac signs and their meanings, as well as knowing knowing birth charts and their complex meanings. One major, fun, and popular way is horoscopes. According to Merriam-Webster, horoscopes can be defined as an astrological forecast. Horoscopes are made when a different when planets move in different positions. These different positions these different positions have an effect on a person's personality or different events. Because as as mentioned before, or maybe not, um, astrology or horoscopes can be not only applied to people but also different events different countries and different different countries different places objects animals it is very much a universal tool a very it's very much a universal tool that is used heavily for many different many different things in many different in many different cultures as stated before Another major aspect or fun aspect of astrology that astrology can be used for is synastry or compatibility. So many people, when they talk about astrology and zodiac signs, they talk about which signs are compatible. However, it's, again, a very not in-depth conversation because it only focuses on sun signs or basic zodiac signs. However, Sinatry for d- dies even deeper with comparing two people's entire birth chart as to see if they are a successful match romantically or um, as partners. So Sinatry can be defined as, according to Merriam-Webster, as similarity of condition or fortune pre- prefigured by astrology, as stated before. So Sinatry really is just an in-depth version of um, Zodiac sign compatibility and that is just a really fun way that many um people who are professional astrological uh people who professionally study western astrology they use not so much zodiac compa- zodiac sign compatibility but synastry as to compare two people romantically or even uh, platonically as friends as well When learning about astrology, you'll hear a lot of um, disbelief and um, criticism against astrology as many people believe that people use astrology as to easily define people and put people in categories and boxes and or take away agency from people as their own human beings as they can rely heavily on their um their birth chart or zodiac signs so let's say there's a running running gag of oh someone will be like oh i'm sorry i killed that person i'm a scorpio or they'll say like oh i'm sorry i'm such i really mean to you i'm a leo however this is very much a misconception in astrology or something that is miscued astrology is not so much so trying to put people in boxes it's it's used as a tool as a guiding tool for 
knowing how you are as a person, knowing how you handle your emotions, which I feel like personally to me has been a really big help in knowing on how I deal with my emotions because I never had a real clear understanding, but astrology really helped me. Or knowing what career paths you really want to do. Maybe a person who's struggling on what they want to, what they like can read their birth chart and see like, oh, uh, so let's say you are, you have your, you have your, you have a, you have a Virgo, okay? So you have your Jupiter in Virgo in your sixth house, which is um, me. So that means I'm very much, I like to be a service to people. I like to help people. I like my work involves very much health, whether that be mental or physical of others and being in service of others. However, let's say another person has their um, Jupiter in Sagittarius um, in, let's say, the eighth house, their work or their career goals may differ into um learning and being learning about different cultures and different things and really diving deep into deep questions about the universe and people and the things around them so knowing astrology really is not to put people in boxes i mostly for me personally i see box i see people putting other people in boxes when they do not have a clear understanding of what astrology is it is a box to say someone is just a Leo when they're whole, they're not just their sun sign. And I've said this, I've said this a quote many times. You are not just you, your sun sign. You are, other, you are influenced by 12 other planets. You are influenced by 12 other aspects in 12 different houses in different varying degrees of up into 120, 120. So it all depends on you as a person and what you think how you see astrology personally to yourself and how it can be useful to you because again it is like a tool just like a hammer like anything else learning about it and taking the necessary steps on to learn to learning out how to use it is important when talking about astrology and also recognizing that it has deep roots in not just western culture but other cultures as well and takes influence for influences from them as well is very important to knowing um knowing astrology and also it's not demonic or um witchcraft or anything of the sort there's nothing wrong with the witchcraft or anything or people who practice that as that's a religion but astrology really much just focuses on celestial celest- celestial and um cosmic thinking on um, thinking like what are you as a human being how do you fit into this grand universe that we live in which i think that's what really personally to me helps me um with knowing with astrology and studying it So thank you all for listening to this video and um, just listening to me rant and talk about astrology. Again, astrology is like anything else. It is a language. It is a tool. It is important if you really want to know more about it is to really learn and listen to get as much information. Because also, I'm just one person. I'm not an astrologer. I'm not a fact. Um, I got all this information from going in and learning through others. And what they believed, and what they believe astrology is, and what it is to them, and how they define it, and just bringing all that into what I personally believe and what I see in my own life. So, but thank you all again for this video, for listening to this video, and I hope you all learned something about astrology.